Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a intraday stock database. We're going to be using the Trader API as our data source. So you're going to want to set your working directory in this very first line, load up the packages. And for the database, we're going to be using SQLite and of course, sourcing all of our functions for the Trader API. For the API, you're only going to need the check access token and the get history functions. And alternatively, if you want to use a different source, I'll show you where to change that. But once you have loaded up these packages and source the functions for the Trader API, we're going to start off by getting a list of tickers and we're going to use the SEC as a source for the stock symbols. In order to make this get request, you're going to need to insert your user agent. So just insert a website and your email address, which will get passed in in this get request. If the request went through successfully, you're going to see a data frame called info in your environment, which will look like this. So we're going to extract all the tickers from here and we also want ETFs. So we're going to read in some files from the CBOE. We're going to format the tickers. So we're going to replace any hyphens and periods with slashes, combine all the tickers together, which will give us about 11,000 different tickers. Now to request data from the API, we're going to use this function called get history bars and we're going to pass in all of our tickers one by one. We're going to request 10 days of intraday data using one minute intervals. We're also going to request extended hours data and we do not want to return this as an XTS. So if you want to use a different source, you would just replace line 37 and 38 with the API that you want to use. And it's going to loop through the tickers, make the request and return the data if there's no errors. And you should see the progress out in the console looks similar to this and you will see the ticker, the number out of the number of tickers that we have and the percentage of completion. So these will get returned as a list and we need to combine all of them into a single data frame done in line 43 and 44. So if we run those lines and we take a look at data, we're going to see our bars, our volume, the timestamp and the symbol. So if we scroll all the way to the bottom, we see a different symbol and this is how it's going to be stored in our database. So back in the script here, you'll get a printout at the end with a number of symbols that you were able to get out of the original list. Now it's time to save our data in a database. But first, as a backup, I like to save these data frames in case something goes wrong with our database. We always have a backup. So make sure you change line 53 to an appropriate directory or folder in your computer. And it's going to save using today's date so that we can reference it later. For verification purposes, I like to print out the number of tickers I was able to get from the API stored into the data frame and a printout of the min and max date. So if we run these lines and we'll take a look at our console, we'll see out of the five that we got our min date and our max date. Now it's time to create or append our database. So in this next block, we need to issue our types for each column. We're going to call the SQLite driver. And for line 64, you're going to want to change the DB name and choose where to store this database. And the way we append or write into our database is by calling the database name, the value, which will just be data, which is our data frame. We're going to set the append flag to true in case this is your second time running it. And we're going to select false for overwrite. So I usually do this once a week and I just append the data. And once that's finished, you're going to want to disconnect. And if you didn't encounter any errors, it's going to print out line 67. Now, once you have data stored into your database, we can access the database by creating a function, which is commented out. And essentially just pass in the ticker that you want data for. And we're going to call our SQLite driver. We're going to connect to our database. So here, just make sure that you have the correct path to your database. It should be the same as line 64 and the same database name as line 65. And we're going to pass in the statement where we want all the data for that specific symbol. We're going to disconnect. Since this returns as a data frame, I want to convert this data into an XTS object. So from line 78 to 81, we convert our data into an XTS object. We want unique values. So we're going to use make index unique. We're going to change the column names and finally just return the data. So this is a repeat here. We're just going to request data for Mara. So let's go ahead and run this and take a look at our data. We now have an XTS object. Now I have been saving these for a couple of months, so I am able to see data as far back as April 22nd. So you're going to be able to use this script to request intraday data, and it's really up to you when you run it or how frequent you want to run it for. But with that, guys, this concludes the video. I'll leave a link down in the description area to my Patreon where you can find the script. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.